As soon as we get into the blow, it is very soft and my vehicle is bogging down. So as we were going along, I heard over the radio that um, Vaughan got stuck. And the tide was coming in at that point and we, because we'd only just got off the ferry not long before. Coming out, let us know if you're coming off the beach. How are you going? You're exhausted. Yes. Running around on the sand's not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> Uh, what an amazing afternoon to finish off the trip, just sitting back enjoying our beers with some tappers and spectacular views. So here we are on the amazing North Stradbroke Island, 45 minutes from Brisbane. On tour this time with us is Mark and Sarah Banks towing their XT14E behind their Isuzu truck. They're going to be our tour guides this weekend. They've got some amazing spots for us to visit, so let's go check it out. Hi and welcome to our Stratty trip. Something MVC have done for quite a long time and do extremely well is hands-on testing of the product. So we've hooked up some new models and we're taking them over to Stradbroke Island. We're gonna sleep in them, cook on them, use the fridge slides, do everything you as a customer would do in that caravan. And we test them and we refine them and we do this continuously. That's the big advantage in how we get those little details right that sets MDC apart from the competitors. It's important to us to give you the very best product that's ergonomic, long lasting, and of course, comfortable. So come and join us and see what we do to give you the best possible product. Along with us on this trip to beautiful Stradbroke Island is Mark and Sarah Banks. They've joined us with their four wheel drive truck towing their much loved MDC XT14E that has seriously done so many miles around this country. Also along on this trip is Vaughan, our CEO, towing the XT16 HR East West with his loud and mighty Y62 Nissan Patrol. Anya is along towing the recently released XT10E in the single beds layout behind the LC300 series Land Cruiser, while yours truly is towing the prototype of the newly released XT10E low profile that's about to hit the showrooms nationally. Everyone's excited and ready for a great weekend in what can only be described as paradise. Uh, really looking forward to this weekend with the MDC crew. Um, I've been to Australia a few times and the guys haven't, so I'm looking forward to showing them around uh, Cylinders Beach and then up to the brewery and then to show them around the island in general. So it should be a great weekend and the barge is just about here. So I'm um, ready to go. So in order to get to North Stradbroke Island with your camper caravan four wheel drive, you need to come across on the C-Link ferries. Now these guys are very accommodating. We've got some very large rigs and the trip across was very smooth. But as you come across, you can see Mud Island, Peel Island, and you get to understand sort of the layout of the land coming out of the Brisbane port. The trip across on the ferry was wonderful. I uh, got to sit up the top and look around at all the different islands around. Um, yeah, and the, the weather was perfect. The sun was out, nice cool breeze to cool us down. It was, it was a really nice ride. Here we are, we're about to pass um, Peel Island. In the background behind me is Horseshoe Bay. Um, most nights on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you'll see that bay there full up with uh, big cruises, yachts and that sort of stuff. Um, back in the day, Around the other side was a leper colony and the actual people there carved out a path through the coral to get in there. Um, once we turn past the island here, it's straight into Dunwich there to unload and on we go to our next destination. How good is Australia? Mark said we'll just pull up up the road with two minutes from the ferry, we'll pull up probably spot a koala. So we've pulled up, got out of the car, and within seconds, a koala with its baby sitting in the tree. Absolutely gorgeous. Middle of island suburbia, and you can experience things like this. You've got to get over here and check it out. We're at uh, Flinders Beach um, Beach Access Track. I'm um, gonna let the tires down, and since we've got the caravan here, we run different pressures to our vet van, 
Um, I use a safety Dave system, so it's going to take this off and then Sarah's going to put on the steins that'll let the tyres down to our set pressure. Right, there's your piece. So I've done a few trips now with MDC and driving the Her MDC, which I've christened Elsie, she drives nicely on 18, so that's my preference for my tyre pressure. So I'll do that today before we get onto the, the beach at Strutty. So on the truck, um, I run high pressure in the truck because we're at 7.5 tonne at our max. So um, we're at, these tyres are currently at 85. What we're going to do for the beach today, because we do have low tide once we get on, is I'm, I'm going to take the rear down to 35 and then the front I'll put down to 30 psi. Um, and that's what we do with ours. And we use the Stein deflators that are preset, um, so that'll automatically take it down for us. And the other top tip, guys, is to make sure once you get your tyres down to pressure that you don't forget to lock your hubs in because nothing more embarrassing than you drive on the beach and you get stuck because you haven't done the hub. So locked in, ready to go. So it's getting late in the afternoon, the tide's coming in, but it's time for us to hit the beach and get to camp. And so we're gonna go into the first entry to the beach, but because we are towing large caravans, we sent Mark in the camera car just to go to see what the beach was looking like as the tide was coming in. So he's headed off in the camera car and come back and said, we can't go this way. And so we've had to head up the inland track. Now the inland track is very tight and we just weren't sure whether the banksters were gonna get their vehicle through, but at this time of the day, we've got no choice, we need to get there. So now it's off to the second beach entry. Went to plan B, which was go back around to the other side of Amity and we came on the beach that way, which is much safer, but the tide wasn't in our favour by the time we did that. And as soon as we get into the blow, it is very soft and my vehicle is bogging down and I just haven't gone quick enough at the start. And I'm in uh, high four, and I definitely should have picked low four. And so as soon as I've turned onto the beach, she's just gone down and I've stopped. Be careful where I am, it's, uh, the tide's coming right up. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm I've stopped. So as we were going along, I heard over the radio that um, Vaughan got stuck and then I, um, I could hear him calling out to uh, Steve to come down. Coming out, let us know if you're coming off the beach. From there I started backing down and uh, Anya was slowing down as well and, and that's something you probably shouldn't do um, because as we slow down, there's a little sandbank in front of us and down we went. We headed on to the sand and it was treacherous to get going and I saw Mark and Sarah stuck in their, in their Isuzu truck so I just kept going. I thought I'm not going to stop, I was going to keep going. I'm going to keep going guys. Yeah, good idea. My advice, if you stay up a little bit higher, it's, uh, it's a little bit firmer. I'm on the move people, does anyone else need help? I was not far off at low tide but uh, it was just very soft and we got bogged. Uh, the truck and the van combination is quite heavy, so uh, we did get bogged. And not only did we get bogged, uh, but we had three MDC vehicles with us and they were also getting bo also bogged or get trying to get other people, one of the other cars out. And it took a little while to get out and the tide was coming in at that point and we, because we'd only just got off the ferry not long before. So uh, we had just had some good Samaritans driving past that stopped and uh, helped us pull the truck out. And um, yeah, that was, it, was, it was a very kind gesture. See how this goes. <laughs> now, normally you wouldn't be on the beach this late in the afternoon or a few hours before high tide, but we tried to get into the first cut in up the end. We go along the beach. There's, can't get through the little river area. Had to turn around, come back up, come back here. It's getting late in the day. We had to get to camp and a couple of us got stuck, but there's some great people out here that help us get on our way and absolutely amazing. And just like to thank you guys a lot and we're going to be having a few beers with you tonight. That's the best thing about any of the camping around Australia is wherever you are, if you do get into trouble, there's always people that will stop and help. There's, um, it's just such good spirit. Right guys, uh, so you saw before we had a bit of a trouble there on the beach, um, couldn't get into low range and got stuck. Um, but luckily on the beach there's a golden rule that happens and uh, Marcus here come to the rescue. So Marcus, yeah, thank boy. you very much for that. Not a problem mate. So what, you were just out cruising around? We were actually in a hurry to get to our campsite and um, tide's coming in and you were stuck so we're not going to leave you hanging there. Oh, that's so, great. So yeah, I, I, I was saying to Harrison, I was like, oh, we need to go back and check on him. 
And yeah, so I banged a Yui and managed to get him out. So yeah. happy days. So once we got the snatch trap on there and the max tracks down, a um, good weapon to have with you all the time, the old max tracks, pulled straight up and we got back into camp. And as an appreciation of thank you, I've got uh, two hats here for him, airbag man and yeah, a stubby boy. cooler for him. Thanks, so, mate, mate. Appreciate thank it. Thank you again, bud. Glad we got you out. Happy days. All right, we've just uh, pulled into camp and we've got vans across the area here that we've got space for them. So while I'm getting um, the dinner prepped, um, I've done a little surprise for the guys here. So I've got some little pies here in the oven. All right, guys, food's up. Little snack oh, while I'm cooking. Mate, what do you got there? Oh, just a pie, mate. So what I did was, while we were all down at the boat ramp earlier, I just whacked these in one hour into it and we got hot pies. So this will just tie you over. Who wants some sauce? Oh, yes, please. Sauce in the pie. Oh, that is just fabulous. It's the way to go, is it? I'll tell you what, you banksters just have everything, don't you? Oh, it's, what as long as you, it, like in the morning, when you start driving, you just get going on the road a little bit, pull up, have a look around your van, your car, make sure it's all good. There Anya, you go. Don't miss out. Anya? I'll stop painting my fingernails for this. All righty, eh? you want one with sauce? Thank you. All right, I've got plenty more there, and what I'll do now is I'll go get your dinner on the way. The guys have had their snack and uh, as soon as I got in the camp here, I got the A smoke on and it's up to temp, it's 108 degrees. So we're gonna do tonight, we're gonna do some chicken breasts that have been rolled. I got soy sauce and macadamia on this one. And the other one um, is just plain soy sauce with Wilchester sauce. Uh, they've all got a stuffing in them there to um, just give it something else to eat with. Uh, on the smoker, this will take uh, an hour and a half to cook up. And uh, the end result, when you have a look and cut into the meat, you will see that there is this beautiful um, glaze that's gone through into the meat. And for when you have a big tray like this, there's a little accessory. Um, so with the smoker now into place, I'm just going to make sure all the pellets are in the auger and this auger will run now for the hour and we'll just check it later on to make sure it's gone through so she's all ready to go we'll close her up right we're about uh 70 percent into our cook for tonight so we're just going to pop the smoker up first thing i'm going to do is just make sure the hopper is ready to go and there's plenty of pellets in there i'm just going to pull some of these out just so i can do a rotation oh look at that so these are chicken breasts with uh, stuffing inside there with a macadamia nut, soy sauce, and there's a couple of lemon pepper ones in there. And up top, I've got some uh, young vegetarian sausages here for our lovely Simon, the cameraman. There you go, so looking beautiful. All right, it's been an hour and a half now that the uh, meat's been on the smoker. So it's time to pull the ribs out, throw them down on some foil and give them a wrap. And in the meantime, we'll pull out the breasts, chicken breasts, and we'll put them on the plates. And then uh, we'll call the guys in to um, give them a feed. So let's check it out, eh? Look at that, nice bit of smoke there. So it should have some good color in there. Righty, hey Vaughan, so what are you after? Everything. All right, a bit of this. A bit of everything, thank you. Um, for the guys, I've done two, so I'll give you one of those ones, a smaller rib one. Throw you some rib up. All right, help yourself some to salad. some salad. Some The next morning we continued to be spoiled by Mark's cooking. We were woken to hash browns, eggs, bacon, uh, little sausages. It was amazing. Being that it's a full breakfast with bacon, eggs, chipolatis, mushrooms, hash browns, you can't go past the old baked beans. Don't do it in the frying pan. 
just light it up and set it straight on top, ready to go. Um, while my husband was doing the cook up, we saw some kangaroos. There was a mother and a joey, and there was a there was a big male kangaroo as well. So one thing to be aware of when you are driving around Strati is that there's a lot of wildlife, koalas, kangaroos, and uh, just to be cautious and conscious of them. Okay, so we get the sausages cooking over here. <clears throat> Gives me a bit more room on the kitchen. Mark and Sarah have laid it all on again. We've just got a gourmet breakfast on the beachfront at Flinders on North Strati. This is just unbelievable. Uh, we had this one set up before the Birdsville trip and um, we made plenty of coffees on that Birdsville trip. Some, some um, very happy travellers. <laughs> there we go. A nice, hot, frothy coffee. Um, with these NBC kitchens, I've opted for the full burner here. Um, it's great on windy days. You've got the little side plate here to give you protection while you're cooking. I use the lid top for my little storage of the stuff. And then I've got my sink here beside me. It's like cooking at home. With the MD kitchen, it's easy. I just put a little hot plate across the top. And to do the eggs, I've got the old poacher there ready to rock and roll. All right, everything's coming along nicely now. I've got the mushrooms on. I've got poached eggs, sunny side eggs up. I've got some bacon there ready. Um, I reckon these first slide will be done. So it's just as easy as pick up the little tray, slide the egg out. So we've got some croissants now to put on. They'll go nicely with breakfast. Got some cheese to melt on them. Here we go, we're just getting heat them up a bit and then we'll get the cheese going. You might notice we have gold cutlery. We always get comments on it. So the reason we do that is so that when you do communal wash up at the end of the cooking, we always get our gold cutlery back because everyone knows where they belong. Right, after a bit of time, breakfast is ready guys. So uh, you come in there, there's got a bit of everything. So we've got chipolatis here. We've got poached eggs here, we've got sunny side up, we've got tossed, um, we've got the old um, croissants, mushrooms, bacon, and then the old hash brown, and these are vegetable ones. All good for you. And my favourite, baked beans to finish it off. You can always tell when you're done right because everyone's loading their plates up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey? <laughs> <laughs> So this is our second MDC van. We've got the MDC XT14E, which uh, the E stands for the electric roof. Uh, we had a 17 hard roof before that. We downsized when uh, we bought the truck. So we've done a couple of mods on this one. So we have two drawers that have been added um, in the kitchen area, which has made so much better with storage. There's so much more storage outside right near the kitchen. Um, it's fabulous. Uh, I love the kitchen on this one big burners, uh, it's got the big the big gas burners, four big gas burners on the outside. Um, and then the bed inside is actually a super king. Um, we've got the two side pieces out, so we've got storage for clothes down either side. Uh, we can put one of those back in to make it a king, but at the moment we've got both out and it's a queen size bed, so plenty of space. Inside toilet shower, it's a combined toilet shower, which we had in our 17 as well, so we actually didn't mind that. Um, we will, at some stage in the future, go with our third MDC van, and that one on my wish list is a separate toilet shower, just because I like the space and the storage in those ones. Um, but yeah, we're, we're absolutely loving this one. It's so compact. Everything's, the fridge is right there. You don't even have to walk inside to get to the fridge. The storage is right there next to the fridge. Everything is all in there in one spot, and it's so easy to get to and so convenient. So guys, we're about to head back onto the Flinders Beach and Banksy, what have you got in store for us today? Well today we're going to go the short way up the beach to Adder Rock and then from there we're going to head back over to Dunwich to do the inland track to Brown Lake. So from there onto Main Beach and then play around and back to camp tonight. 
Well, let's see if uh, someone else in our camp can get stuck today rather than me and yourself, Vaughn. Yeah, so three down yesterday. Only one person didn't get bogged. Who was that? <laughs> Who do you reckon? Yeah, I know. I heard about it all night. From what I hear, Anya, the uh, access onto the beach is a bit soft, so we're going to have to give it the berries this morning so we don't get stuck. That was certainly the right amount of right foot there, Anya. I'm going to die, 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 wondering. Can't get bogged, otherwise they will give me absolute hell. So yesterday trying to get through the tide was up and the section we just came along there is eroded right up to the dune vegetation and you're not allowed to drive on that stuff it's an absolute no-no uh, so we stopped short camped somewhere else and now that the tide's down and everything we've got no problem getting past today uh, we can do it safely without damaging any of the dune vegetation look after the dunes look after the beaches don't hoon and we'll be able to use them, our kids and their kids will be using them well into the future. So here we are on Main Beach, which is, which is on the eastern side of the island. This beach is about 38 kilometres long, has a couple of camping spots as well. I could almost say that this may be a competitor for me to Fraser Island. This place is absolutely amazing. Getting onto the beach was easy. There was a couple of soft spots where I had to put the foot down, but my cruiser and the caravans, they towed like a dream. And I mean, look at this perfect day. The weather is wonderful and I actually want to go out there and go for a swim. One of my favourite pastimes when I'm on the beach is looking for pippies. Perfect timing today, low tide, cars have gone across. See these little blisters? The pippies down in here. So normally I'll just get these for bait, but Mark and Steve are going to cook these up for entree tonight. Mark was saying that they're better than oysters. Now I love oysters, so that's a big call, but I'm willing to give these guys a go for entree tonight. So Steve, this is Main Beach at Stratty. What do you think? I think it's beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. Nice to drive on. The water looks spectacular. And what a beautiful spot, just 45 minute barge ride from Brisbane, how good. I know you're a bit spoilt for nice places to go camping up here within, within an hour of home, it's unbelievable. And that's probably why the MDC product's so popular in Queensland, I mean um, everyone here just does what we do, right? Well it's very much a lifestyle thing, yes, and when when you've got the opportunity to, to say on a Friday afternoon say, oh, let's go camping and you're an hour away from this what wouldn't you like even if it was just for the night absolutely worth the effort and that's why i like Stratty so much too is it's so easy to get around we just came off flinders now we're on main beach 
bitumen in between it's really quick to get around we can pop back for a coffee at the at the coffee shop if we want to or some seafood from the from the trawler we'll cut across to dunwich this beach is certainly a little bit quieter than the other beach is that because there's more camping sites on the other side it's the hang how everything is so handy if you want to shoot out and get a coffee it's a couple of minutes if you want to shoot to the pub a couple of minutes the other direction here you've got to go about 24k down to the first campsite <laughs> The more you travel Stradbroke, the more great things it keeps delivering. We're now at Brown Lake, which is a perched lake situated just off the road. It's a great access to get here. Two wheel drive vehicles, push bikes, you name it, you'll get here no problem at all. The water is beautiful and it's a tea tree color from the surrounding tea trees and bushlands. And when I say it's a perched lake, it means the bottom is leaf litter and other material that has actually sealed it off to create the lake so the water doesn't drain away through the earth. As we arrive, there's two curlews with little chicks just wandering around. Nature just keeps turning up everywhere you are on this place. This spot here, Brown Lake, is a great swimming destination. It's safe, there's plenty of people here. There's wood fire barbecues for your use so you can cook your lunch, plenty of bench seating around, and also a composting toilet. So there's great facilities here. So if you're looking for that picnic or somewhere to spend a bit of time and cool off on Stratty, this is the place you've got to visit. All right, that was a beautiful swim there in Brown Lake. Um, being fresh water and the tea tree in there makes your hair soft, feel good after a day on the beach. Looking forward to now getting back to camp. So Banksy turning right out of here, where are we off to now? Uh, this road brings us back into Dunwich and then from there we're going to head back around to Amity to get onto the beach again. And so once we get back to camp, what's in store for dinner Steve? I, I thought I might see if I could cremate a roast in the uh, camp oven. We've got the pippies. Yes, pippies, even better. Mike was saying that they're better than oysters so let's bring it. Are you guys stuck? Yep. Righto, I'm coming. Oh, here we are again. Um, I had a little problem with can't get my selector into low range. So we tried it at high range and got stuck. So what I'm going to do now is dig a little bit out in front of the van. I've dug in the front of the truck, put some Mack tracks down, and we're going to try to drive out now that I've actually got low range selected. So I've got to do a bit of digging now. All right, so got the Mack tracks now under the back wheels. Just do the front. I'm going to drive up on top, and then from there, um, gun it and see if we can get up on the beach. Burying. All right, move one up to that wheel, Dar. We're just repositioning the Mack tracks. I've got them up on the boards, but the guys forgot to let me know that I'm actually on them and I went past them so now it's going to reset and do the same again but this time I'm going to keep going. See how we go. How are you going? You're exhausted. Yes. Running around on the sand's not the easiest thing to do <laughs> and I'm not the fittest. <laughs> we uh, have a bit of time with the tide. Yes, yeah today's not as stressed as yesterday so uh, we made sure we planned it so we had plenty of tide. Yesterday we were a bit stuck because we'd just come off the uh, ferry so we 
we didn't have that choice, but yeah, today we planned it so that we had plenty of tide. So um, yeah, it's just a matter of going through the process, filling, putting the tracks down, or the treads down and the max tracks down, um, and we'll get there. We'll get there. Right, so we, we've managed to go probably 20 metres and then it got stuck again. So we're just going to put max tracks in front of everything and then give it another go. But we're going to put a car on the front this time, just to give me a little extra pull. So I'm just getting this hitch out to use in the back of the full drive. Here you go. Thanks. All right, so I'm just going to remove his hitch pin out of here. And the pin from the caravan now is going to get swapped out. This is called a bridle pull. So I'm hooking up to both sides of my toe point, strap in the middle and one to the car. All right, so these are your standard shackles that you use for um, most four wheel drives. But since I've got the truck and we're at that 10 ton, we can use the big daddy. And as you can see, fair bit of difference in those two there. But this will do the trick, it'll get us out. Just make sure you put that cover over the top. That goes through there. Feed it back on itself. And that's ready to go. But as you can see, like big difference in diameter on that one there. Right, from today's uh, Bippy collection there, we're gonna do the poor, poor man's oyster today. So from the Bippies we've collected, um, I put them into a bowl of fresh water, and the fresh water, um, when you sit them in there, not that you can probably see, but it purges all the salt, the sand out of the Bippy. And then with the Bippy there, we just get a knife, pull them up, up the top there, you just put it into the slice there, don't go all the way through because you want them to stay fairly intact. So you're just breaking the shell like that. Now what I'm going to do is first do like a little um, bacon, onion and herb um, mix that we're going to just fry up first. And then we're going to put that aside and then we're going to put the bippies onto some water. And I've got a cup of salt water here and we're just going to simmer them on that. And then once they're just about cooked, we'll add some more flavours. You love cooking, Mark? I do, mate. It's um, more so when I go camping, and I have a tradition at home when the kids were younger, every Sunday afternoon you had to be home by two, and we'd always do an outdoor barbecue, roast, uh, spit roast, camp on camp oven. It's always a nice way to go. So we need to leave some of these juices in here. Um, so these don't take very long because it's a very thin meat that's in there and you don't want to overcook them so that they become um, like rubber. You want them so they've got a bit of rawness to them like an oyster um, and then that's when they taste the better. Um, you'll see that all the shells will, once it gets enough heat in there and the water's gone through, that they will split right open. So you can see now, so you see all the shells are opening up, that means that they are just about done. Let's give them a little bit longer. So as you can see, they've all peeled open nicely. So we're sort of making like Kilpatrick oysters, but with the old straddy um, bippy. While that's been sitting there steaming away, the onion's gone all soft. All right, that's one tray. And then I'll just get another one here as well, prepped up. Um, I've done a mixture of ones without shells, ones with shells. 
and um, I'll go plate this rasses up and we'll go feed the hordes and see what they think of the, the straighty pippy. All right, so I've got my feed up here, guys. So I've got some um, bippies here out of the shell in a bacon onion uh, sauce mix. Over here, we have a couple of natural ones and then we have bacon all mixed in with these. Now, these are all doubled up, so it's actually two bippies. So give it a crack and see Mate, what you think. That's gourmet. It is. And <laughs> I, I can tell you that when I get hold of this boy like that, and you scoop him out. That is beautiful. Try and try and without show if you're, if you're worried. But it's just, that. It's just odd because I use them for that's bait. Delicious. Oh wow. Oh wow. That is sensational. Mm. I don't know. Obviously. So that if you don't catch no fish for the day, you can always eat your bait here on Stratty. Off-grid party of two, your caravan is ready. Single beds, air conditioning, diesel heating, lithium battery and ample solar are just the start. Slide out kitchen and storage with Annex means room to cook, privacy and space. MDC, escape with confidence. Hi, I'm just going to do a little talk about my truck here. Um, so it's an Isuzu MPS um, with a modified um, subframe underneath, we've got parabolics on the back, as well as I've just had some Airbag Man airbags system fitted to the back of the truck to assist um, when we tow the van. Um, it's only for when the road gets really bouncy and it bounces around a bit, it just takes that reband out. And on the dash I have controls there where I can go up or down as we travel. And the good thing about it is, is when you're on tight tracks on the beach or where you're four driving, I can actually use that system to um, move the truck off a tree and off to one side or drop down the other way. Um, on, in the rest of the truck there, we have a fridge, 75 litre fridge behind us. Then behind that is a sink, uh, hot water, cold water. Um, we have up above that power station that has USBs. I have a radio up the top there, which actually hooks into a marine system. So I can actually tell the weather, uh, temperatures of the cab, with all the bits and pieces about how much amperage I'm using, how much water I've still got left. Um, on the next cabinet back, um, I've got a barbecue in there. Um, probably one of the latest things we've put in there is a travel buddy oven. Um, oh my God, that is fantastic. When you do that couple of big days where you can just pull over after morning, you can have um, two hour drive, throw in some quiches or small pies or even chicken strips. And then you drive and you pull up for lunch. Um, that's already cooked for you, ready to go. As you go around back around the other side there, I have a 30 metre hose system that has a hot water system in there with a toilet that can drop down to the floor and we have a zip top that goes around the cabin door so you can close that area off and a tray system that I can collect the grey water. Next cabin around, we have all the storage for like all the things that you would need. You know, spare batteries, torches, plates, cups, um, bits and pieces, fuses and what sort of stuff. And the next cabin around has um, air in there um, I run two compressors, so the back compressor that runs the airbag system allows me to, there's an 11 litre AMEM storage tank under there and I can use that to pump up the van tyres and then the compressor at the front allows me to blow out the truck and pump up the tyres on the truck because the truck runs at around 75 to 85 on the front and 90 on the back depending on what weight I'm carrying. Um, in the back of the cab, I've added in some Sirocco fans to make it more comfortable for the people that travel with us sometimes. And that's a four seater across the back, so there's always plenty of room in there. And then up front, we just have your normal um, Safety Dave air, air system, so I can check what my tyres are doing, check what the van tyres are doing, and it allows all those things. Um, we just carry as well, in the top part of the truck, we have a, a king size bed that folds out from iCamper and underneath that storage where I carry a spare cassette, uh, always have my chainsaw in there, and I carry a couple of spare chairs um, and max tracks that go on the back and up top, because when you've got this size rig, you need max tracks for the, the truck and the max tracks for the van. So after last night's amazing dinner, it's now MDC's turn, and Steve's gonna cook us up a roast, which I've just been hanging out for all day. Well, Saturday night on Stratty is Steve's turn to cook. So I've been voluntold to cook a lamb roast. So we're gonna do it tonight in a camp oven. A Little bit rusty, it's been a while since I've had to cook a roast in a camp oven, but we've got the lot here. We've chopped the potatoes, we've seasoned the potatoes. We've got sweet potato, onions, carrots, pumpkin, and 
we have this hometown hampers dry rub this stuff is sensational look it up find it get some of this and rub it on your meat it is dead set perfect so we'll get chopping we'll get this sweet potato all done up basic rule of thumb is i'm going to throw the meat into the camp oven and then i'm just going to fill all the rest of available space with veggies put the lid on cover it in hot coals and hopefully it will be delicious so going to be a bit of guesswork and like i said i'm a bit rusty as you can see i'm even struggling to chop up these things so but stay tuned and check out what's for dinner that time of the evening where we get to rub the meat so i have our hometown hampers blacksland dry rub you've got to check it out i've had a few from this mob and it is sensational so put our dry rub on there give it a rub rub it in don't be shy when it gets too much it'll stop sticking all right so that's good so now we will place that in our camp oven dead center now the fun part what we do is we get our veggies and we just top it up fill up all our available space with lovely nutritional vegetables tetris those yummy veggies in the corners must get the onions in there it wouldn't be a roast without onions my preference red onions they are sweeter they cook delicious now if i was cooking this at home just for the wife and I, I would be smothering this before it's fully cooked with balsamic vinegar. Do not underestimate the joys of balsamic vinegar. That's the Mediterranean in me. And my aim is to hit medium rare, Vaughan's favorite. I can't cook anything unless I put some garlic in it. We'll just go potluck, throw a bit of whatever that's in there. And I reckon we're ready to put the lid on this bad boy and uh, cook it. All right, we don't want too much underneath because we don't want to burn it from the bottom. We'll get our camp oven on there, get our handle out of the way, and shovel a few more on top. Toss him out of the way, get them on there. So we'll keep an eye on it. We'll probably check it about 40 minutes to an hour, make sure we're not doing a cremation in there and see how it's all going in the meantime. Cook some more wood so we've got plenty more coals. Super lightweight, packed with standard features like diesel heater, hot water heater, solar power and lithium battery, the Forte 9 Plus is the ultimate compact getaway hybrid. 270 degree awning and annex has it punching well above its compact size. Try one on today. It's that time of the night where the meat should be ready. So we're gonna get it out of the camp oven and start serving up some veggies and roast lamb. Look at that. I can empty it off. Put that down there on the sticks I prepared earlier and start getting the veggies out. So get these out of the way so I can get to the meat. All right, that should be enough out of the way that I can get the meat out and get it to the cutting table. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Ready to go and cut up. The big test, how's it going to carve? Now we have to get this netting off, so we'll just go at it with a knife. And that's one very, very sharp knife. Beautiful, smell the garlic. Oh. Right, now if you've got to do this properly, you need a boss chopper. Absolute versatility. Oh, oh. 
carving like a beauty. All right, I reckon it's time to start putting this on a plate, serving up some veggies and have dinner. Well, there you go, folks. Roast lamb and veggies in a camp oven, just meters from the beach. Absolutely wonderful. Got a great sauce to top it off. You can do a gravy for yourself, but I suggest grab yourself a camp oven and learn how to cook in it because the food is absolutely amazing. Hopefully next time I'm out there doing this, I'll see you doing the same thing. So it's time for today's first adventure and we're off to North Gorge Walk at Point Lookout. Hey Banksy, so what's the, the schedule for today? Where, what interesting places will you be taking it? All right, so now that we're off the beach, we're gonna head up to Point Lookout. There's a beautiful boardwalk walk that goes around that whole area and then backs up to the surf club. From there, we're gonna head over um, to the other side of the island. Again, back to the calm side, I should call it. And we're gonna go to the springs. There's a little ship in, which is like a little marina and a uh, place you can get a beer and a, and a bit of a feed. And then from there, we'll go up to the Strati Brewing to finish off a great weekend. All I heard was the most important word, feed. Well, I can guarantee you the dinner tonight at the brewery will be fantastic. One of the activities that I can definitely recommend when you do come to Stratty is the Point Lookout. There's a, around the headland, there's a big walk that goes around to the Point Lookout Surf Club. To get to the lookout, you go along a wooden type boardwalk and then you come out to this open point area where the Scenes are amazing. We saw whales playing in the ocean. We saw some osprey seabirds. We've seen turtles. If you come to Stratty, you've got to go there. What do you reckon? I can't believe the view from up here. And Sarah was just saying last time she was here, there was full of kangaroos. Amazing. There's a, there's a path that you can walk on with the stairs and that sort of thing, but you can divert along the way off to the rocks. There's some rock faces there, but you just got to be very careful. Last time we were here, um, someone actually fell off the rocks because the waves uh, crashed up on the rocks. So you, uh, there's signs everywhere war warning you. So you just have to be, um, you know, listen, watch the signs and, and uh, follow what they say because it, uh, it's, it's a real danger. So we've just come through uh, from Point Lookout onto the North Gorge Walk. So we've come down onto the little rock headland, um, which has got the blowhole uh, inlet on it, which is, um, it's good to watch the, the waves crashing up on the rocks there. It's, uh, it's very interesting and um, it's a, be a beautiful spot. We always come here every time we come to Stratty because it's just a, it's a really good outlook. It's the best, one of the best places to see the whales because uh, you can see the, the ocean all the way around. Uh, the walk continues from here all the way around the headland to the surf club, Point Lookout Surf Club. Um, straight down onto Main Beach from there. Right, we're here at Morora Springs. Um, the water comes out on one side of the road, um, fresh water, and then it flows under the road to this beautiful little estuary here. So right now, this whole river system is just pure fresh water. When the tide changes, the water pushes back up here, it turns into a normal mangrove system. And this is where in here, where a guy was on kayaks that they saw this crocodile that, that was out there. What is it? It's a croc. It's a straighty croc. Super hot day, so we jumped in and it was just perfect. I would have liked to have had the swimmers to sit there with a cold glass of beer. <laughs> but right now, if we were to go down there, that is fresh, pure fresh water coming out of the sand in the island, and it's beautiful, so cool. So today's for lunch, Mark and Sarah took us to Little Ship Club. Amazing lunch of calamari overlooking the water. It was just wonderful. Beautiful little marina area um, with a little pub and a restaurant. We're gonna have a couple of beers there and then just have a chill and look at all the boating that are around the area. And then from there, we're gonna head up to the brewery. 
So to finish our trip, we headed to the Stradbroke Brewery. Uh, what an amazing afternoon to finish off the trip, just sitting back enjoying our beers with us some tappers and spectacular views. Definitely recommend an afternoon session up on the deck overlooking the water. Um, it's got views right across towards Brisbane. And best thing about it is the beers, the, the delicious beers. Actually, the Stratty Goza is actually one of my favourite beers. That's, that would be my beer of choice. If, and uh, I do hear they do a nice uh, Goza Rita as well, which is um, a bit of a margarita style beer cocktail. That's delicious. It's just an amazing view. The dinner was awesome. The team loved it. It was just a great way to end off the trip. What an amazing three days we've had on North Stradbroke Island. Thank you to Mark and Sarah Banks for being our tour guides. We've seen some sensational spots along the island. So that's it from us at Off Grid Down Under. We'll see you on our next adventure.